So over the years I've managed to collect, you know, a couple clamps, not too many, but I've noticed that all the cool woodworkers have long reach clamps. I need some long reach clamps. So a conventional clamp actually has a fairly shallow throat, but with a long reach clamp we can make the throat just about as deep as we want and then we can apply pressure to the middle of the workpiece. I'm planning to make mine with box joints because I've got this box joint jig and you know that's pretty strong. So the beauty of this jig is that you can adjust the travel depending on the gear size and how far you turn it and a lot of stuff that I really don't want to get into explaining. You can go to Matthias's channel if you want to read about that. Suffice it to say I need to do some math now. I have a 48 tooth gear here and it's meshed to a 16 tooth gear down here. The threaded rod that moves the carriage is 16 per inch, 16 revolutions per inch. So let's go to the calculator. So I've already figured out that the blade is approximately 0.127 inches wide. 48 tooth gear, uh, meshing with the 16 tooth gear, doing a little bit of math, I come up with it's about 0.18. So I've done a bunch of test cuts already. For example, here's one where they slide in, but they're just a bit too loose. And I had a couple others where they were too tight. And what I think I finally worked out here on the gear is you start with the, I'll start with the gear here, then I'll move it eight teeth so the blade will cut just a little bit wider gap than the blade is. And then I will turn it one and a half rotations, make the cut, turn it another eight teeth and make the cut. Um, all right, so it's a little bit later. I've prepared some stock. I didn't think that needed to be done on screen. I've got three pieces of wood two sets. So actually I've got six pieces of wood. I've got a slightly thicker piece for the vertical part. It is about nine inches long. So since the pieces are each two inches wide, that means I'm going to have, I'm going to have fairly narrow clamps. They're going to have about a five inch gap in between them. So I've got these pieces for the arms of the clamp. I made them 12 inches by 2 inches by just under an inch thick. For the spine, I've made it just a little bit thicker. It's an inch and 3 16 thick, but it's the same 2 inches and, as I already said, by 9. I've got some nice finger joints there. It's really satisfying to have that all work out. All the counting and the figuring and the testing and then you get some really nice joints like that. That should glue together very nicely. But next thing we got to work on is getting the threaded rod in there. And I seem to remember somebody using a panto router to do that. But um, yeah, I've got the plans and I've had them for like two years, but I haven't built the thing yet. So uh, I'm going to have to figure out a different way to make the holes for the uh, threaded rods and the nuts to go into the uh, into the cross piece, oh, the cross piece, into the, into there. So for fitting the end on the thread, I'm going with the Matias style using the angle grinder. In fact, I bought this angle grinder on a ridiculous half price sale at Canadian Tire precisely because I'd seen Matias making these things on his channel and I thought there's a good excuse to buy a tool. Now, an angle grinder is a useful tool in the shop so I don't regret the purchase but just kind of funny that I bought this because of these clamps and I'm finally making these clamps. So I chucked the threaded rod up in the drill press and then while it was spinning I used the angle grinder to first smooth out a section about three quarters of an inch long at the end and then I cut in a notch a bit over an eighth of an inch wide and this will give us a place where we can put in a lock pin for the pad on the, on the clamp. So about halfway through the process I thought you know I better make a prototype 
all the way through so that I can test everything out. And on the prototype, what I did is I, with a Forster bit, I drilled a hole large enough to fit the nut and then I epoxied it in there. And, um, well, pardon me, I drilled, with a Forster I drilled a, a hole big enough for the nut and then I drilled a half inch hole all the way through and uh, then I used epoxy to put the nut in place and I found that uh, really messy. I'd set myself a kitchen timer to come back after 10 minutes and take the rod out because I had the rod in place so the, so the nuts were aligned and I needed to use a wrench to get the rod out because it was totally glued in there. So this time I'm gonna take a page out of John's book and I made the hole, the two holes, the larger hole and the smaller hole but it's not quite big enough, so I'm going to trace out the nut here and I'm going to chisel it clear. A little bit of hand work never hurt anybody. I got the uh, octagon hole on both sides. I've got the nuts ready. I've got the five minute epoxy. And I want to try to not glue the threaded piece into place. Like get it stuck. I've had people ask me about this five minute epoxy and I don't know why. It's, it's really pretty simple. It's not do a one-to-one -one and goop it in there and that's really all there is to it. Mix it and it turns sort of a pearly color and I, I've never had any issues with it. Okay now I want to make sure that these things actually line up so I want to put the threaded part all the way through. Make sure I'm engaging the threads in both of them. And I'll set it aside for about five or ten minutes just so that it gets fairly... There we go. Yeah. Okay. Okay, finally we can uh, glue these together. I've not been able to do that until now because, of course, I needed to get those bolts into place first before we closed up this connection. Okay, that's one, now let's do the other one. So for the handle, I cut a few short pieces of roughly one by one oak and I'm going to drill a half inch hole in the end and I will be epoxying in the threaded pieces for the other two clamps. So I'm gonna use epoxy to glue the uh, handle onto the threaded rod and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my angle grinder and I'm gonna cut a notch in the end. I got that idea from John. Gives a, a little extra place for the epoxy to flow in which should hopefully help it stay nice and solidly locked on there. Okay, we're in the home stretch now. We got these. I glued on some pads here. Need to clean this up and round this over. We got the pads. Still need to drill a little hole in the pad for a, a nail, but we're almost ready to put it all together. But first, a little bit of final sanding and stuff like that.
So the next step is to thread this through, mount the end on, but once I do that it's kind of permanent. So I don't want to do that until I paint it, which begs the question, what color should I paint these things? So one minor hiccup, prototype worked great, one of them worked okay, but on the third clamp, when I'm feeding this through, it just would not thread properly. I ended up cutting off the one nut. I don't know if it really needs two, but uh, somehow the nut must have shifted while it was clamping and it just would not line up. So I'm going to try it with just the, the shorter bit. We'll see how this one works, but again, I made it so I can always make some more. Now, we've got little caps here. Got a little washer. We'll put inside there to give it a little protection. Then we will fit that over here. Oh, I think that belongs on the other one. Just tap that in there and the nail should lock into the little notch. lock into the little notch that's carved into the end of the threaded rod and that will hold it in place while still allowing it to move around a little bit. That's one. And here's number two. And number three, we will take care of that one in a little bit. And of course they have a nice long reach. Here on the main clamp I've got a depth of eight and three quarter inches in the throat and on the smaller clamp I have a depth of six and a half inches. Well that's about it for this project. Maybe not entirely successful but I got two good clamps out of it at least. Maybe two and a half and I had some fun in the shop and speaking of that I'd like to thank you guys for stopping by and spending some time in the shop with me. I hope you found it interesting and enjoyable and we will see you next time. Can we just do this a little bit better? Ugh.